Over the past five weeks, we've had a sermon series called Courageous Living. And over those five weeks, we have been considering together how we can grab hold of the Christian life with courage. Dean Carroll began the series defining courage as something that we do even though we're afraid. Chris Hanby reminded us that God guides us all the time, and so that when we face difficult decisions, we can do so with courage, knowing that God is there with us. And Anne Four invited us to courageously forgive ourselves and others so that we could be a people of reconciliation. This morning, on Transfiguration Sunday, our Gospel reading invites us to see that at the heart of create, courageous living is courageous loving. But before we get to the Gospel story, I'd like to share with you a definition of love that is the most profound that I've come across. I came across it when I was reading Bell Hooks' book titled All About Love, New Visions. Bell Hooks was born just down the road in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Her upbringing was difficult. She experienced a lot of exclusion, rejection, and abuse. When she was born, the schools were still segregated, and she lived in a segregated neighborhood, and so she went to an underfunded black school. And in recalling her life at home, when she got home from school, she said that it was like a roller coaster. Some days were really wonderful, and some days were downright terrifying. Well, she went to college and escaped some of these difficulties. However, she encountered new ones. She had some relationships that were profoundly unhealthy. But she became a professor, an accomplished poet, and a writer. She taught in California and New York, but toward the end of her life, she felt a pull to return home. And so she came back here to Kentucky and started teaching at Berea College. Some people respond to difficulty and challenge with embitterment and resentment. But within Bell Hooks, difficulty made an even deeper well of love within her. And so she spent most of her life writing and reflecting and teaching about the nature of love. Well, her definition of love is very simple, but I think it gets to the very heart of what Jesus' life was centered on, and what that life Jesus invites us to join him in. This is what Bell Hooks said, said love is. Love is the will to nurture our own and another's spiritual growth. Let me say that again. Bell Hooks defines love as the will to nurture our own and another's spiritual growth. In Matthew 17, we hear of Jesus taking the three principal disciples. In other words, he takes his C-suite of disciples up a mountain for a retreat. And while they're there, Jesus' appearance changes. He starts to glow. In the ancient Mediterranean, it was very common for artists to represent deities with light beams coming out of their faces. I think that this feature of the Gospel story is intended to demonstrate to us that Jesus really is what we sing about at Christmas, Emmanuel, God's presence here amongst humanity. Well, alongside this radiant Jesus, Moses and Elijah also appear. Moses and Elijah are two of the most prominent figures within the Old Testament, and they represent some of the authoritative guides 
of how people pattern their life in ancient Israel. Moses represents the Torah, God's instruction, God's law, that gave rules and regulations for how society at large should be structured and functioned. Elijah represents the prophetic tradition, the group of folks who speak out on behalf of people's voices who have been marginalized or silenced. When the apostle Peter saw Moses and Elijah there with Jesus, he got really excited. He offered to build tents for the three of them so that Moses, Elijah, and Moses, and um, Jesus could all live there together for an extended period of time. But as soon as Peter offers to do this, clouds cover the sea, and they heard a voice. And the voice said, this is my son, my beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When Peter looked up, Moses and Elijah were gone. Jesus stood there alone. I think this scene is here intending to teach us as Christian people that Jesus' life, teaching, death, and resurrection is the central thing that should guide us through our lives. There are many sources of authority and inspiration and guidance that we can get that are tremendously helpful. But for us, as Christian people, Jesus' teaching is central. In the very foundation of Jesus' life, I think comes back to that definition of love that Bell Hooks gave us. Jesus' life was powered by a spiritual vision that fueled his own spiritual life and nurture the spiritual lives of everyone he came in contact with. There were times where Jesus broke the laws, the Torah, because he had to, to nourish the spiritual lives of the people around him. There were times where Jesus had to temper the prophetic zeal of some of the people around him. Because the community at large wasn't quite ready for that next step. Nurturing the spiritual lives of ourselves and other people can be challenging. It requires us to be vulnerable and honest with ourselves and with other people. Nourishing our spiritual lives in the lives of folks around us can also make us have to rearrange our priorities, maybe change the structure of our lives. It might cause us to think about other people differently and challenge us to relate to them in different ways. Each of these things has the potential to cause us anxiety and maybe even fear. We see very vividly in the course of Jesus' life what happened to him when he was focused on nurturing people's spiritual lives. It didn't end so well at first, and then it ended really well. But getting through that can be difficult. But Jesus did it anyway, even when he was afraid, and there were times when Jesus was afraid. But as Dean Carroll reminded us at the beginning of our sermon series, courage is doing something even though we're afraid of doing it. And we see that kind of courage in Jesus' life. And Jesus invites us to step into that kind of courage too. And as Chris Hamby encouraged us, God is present with us all the time, guiding us and being with us. So when we face those moments, of difficult choice, they require our courage. We can take heart knowing that God is with us. Because if we want to be these forces of love in the world, if we as a cathedral want to be a community of reconciliation in this city, 
we must have the courage to nourish our own spiritual lives and the lives of the people around us. And that involves what Anne Four talked about a few weeks ago, of being a people who forgive ourselves and forgive those around us. All of these things take courage. Nurturing our spiritual lives and the lives of the people around us. But friends, you, each and every one of you, in this space and those joining us online, you're already engaged in that kind of work. You are already engaged in this act of worship, in nourishing your own spiritual life. And with your presence here, you are encouraging everyone else who's beside you to continue in their spiritual life. And then we, as a community here, are offering a witness to the city of what it means to truly love nurture one another. Friends, let's continue this work that we're already doing. Let's deepen it and let's make it the central feature of our lives.